So we're going to make that exact same effect as you saw in the preview. Um, I used to use it a lot in my old edits, but never really made a tutorial or anything. And people have been begging me for a trap code tutorial. So I, I thought I'd just, yeah, make one. And um, yeah, let's get started right away. First, I'm going to duplicate this layer three times and uh, turn off the top and the bottom layer. And I'm going to make a mask with the rectangle tool, like a square on his face like this. This is fine. Then you want to pre-compose this with control shift and C for beginners. And then make sure this is enabled, click OK. And now we have pre-composed that. Now we want to add a solid like this with control and Y. Now I'm just going to add a form to this. I'm going to add my, or just regular form, not my settings from that one. And here you want to go to base form. Now in base form, you want to click on XYZ linked and change this to individual. Then you want to change this to your comp size. So usually you edit in 920 by 1080 or 1080 by 1080. Um, so I'm going to change that to 920 by 1080 like so. Then the uh, particles in the Z size, I'm going to change this to one. And then for the particles in X and Y to 500 for each. And then for the particles in Z, I'm going to change that to uh, two. And those are basically the settings. Now you want to go to layer maps right here, then go to color and alpha and uh, select the mask or the pre comp mask we just uh, did. So that is this one right there and set this to RGBA to RGBA and then the map over to X and Y. Now we have uh, done that basically and then go to fractal field, change the displays to about 300 and you can see these particles like so um so that's yeah already pretty cool then what you want to do is here is the uh, actual part where you can see the sort of explosion thingy um how i call it go to spherical field like this and to sphere one and change the strength all the way up and um i'm going to change the uh, sphere one position to right about in the middle of the mask like this and then for the radius, this is what we're going to uh, keyframe. So put a keyframe on the radius thing, uh, press U on your keyword so you can see it. Go to the last frame and change this to maybe in this case 250 because this clip is like super long. Um, if it's shorter, you can, let's say it would be till here, then you can do like maybe a thousand or 900. So it's like this, but uh, yeah, like I said, this is a pretty long clip. So I'm going to put this to 250 like so. So now that we have done that, you want to just um, key or select both keyframes, press F9 on your keyword, open up the graph editor, make sure it's set on a value graph, then select the first keyframe and just do something like this. Then you have the sort of like particle explosion. Um, and then what I do, especially since it's a long clip, I go to like maybe the middle, press T your keyboard, pick up or uh, keyframe the opacity, put this to zero, just, oh, whoops, just um, press F9 to easy ease it. And now you have like a nice fade at the end. Um, so this is basically, these are basically the particles, but then I like to always add a color of, yeah, for example, the character. So in this case, it's kind of like um, blue. So I'm going to add a blue tint to it. You wanna add tint, then change the map like this. It's cool, I think. Then I'm going to add a glow. Um, I'm going to add deep glow. Deep glow is like one of the best glows in my opinion. It's a plugin though, so maybe you don't have it. Then you gotta like search on YouTube on how to get it or something. And you wanna select uh, this right here required for tasks. You can also duplicate it to make it even glow more if you want to. Uh, so those are basically the particles. But now, as you can see, like, let's just play it. It's like above like the character. And sometimes if it's a short clip, you don't really notice that that much. And especially with all kinds of effects and transitions. But uh, if you do notice it a lot and you find it looking ugly, 
then that's why we have the third layer. We're going to make a super simple mask. Um, it doesn't even have to be like uh, perfectly clean with all the hair and all that. Um, so I'm just going to add a curves layer. I made a tutorial for a last, uh, um, yeah, my, my recent tutorial was about how to easily mask with a uh, rotor brush. So if you wanna watch that, then I guess go ahead. So add these two, then click on rotor brush, then go to the beginning of your clip, double click and just start masking, start masking like this. And like I said, it doesn't have to be detailed at all. Just make a mask like so. Yeah, that's that's actually all there is to it. Now you wanna just click on freeze. And then you can uh, remove the curves and sharpen layer. Now it's back to normal again. And we have our mask and as you can see, um, as you can see, you don't ha even have to have a detailed mask because, you know, you don't really notice it even that much that the particles are going just a little bit over the hair. Now, then there is one more option you can do, which is optional. But uh, if you want to, it can look pretty cool uh, for some clips. And uh, so that is duplicated one more time. And I'll go to the last frame and change the radius to about uh, maybe in this case, 900. Then go to the graph, just change the graph a little bit like this. That it's back to normal again. Then go to the first frame, go to transform here and keyframe the Z rotation. Go to the end once again, press U on your keyboard to see the keyframe again. Then click uh, maybe like maybe 90, 90 rotation on there. Then once again, just yeah, easy, easy it with F9. Then go to the graph editor. And in this case, change the graph to maybe something like this. So the rotation is a little bit delayed. And then you have like sort of two explosions, but one of them rotates, which, which makes it look like, it's like, yeah, I don't know. It makes it look different. Um, this is optional, like I said, because sometimes it can look good. Sometimes it doesn't. So that's completely up to you. In this preview, you can probably see right now if I'm editing it correctly, you can see that I also added two and it looks like really good. But in this case of the tutorial, it doesn't look all that good, but you know, it's up to you. And then once again, you can duplicate it to add even more glow if you want to. So yeah, that's actually it. This is uh, all there is to it. That's how you can make the sort of like particle explosion. Um, I hope this video helps you out. And if it did, please leave a like and let me know in the comments um, what you thought of it. And uh, yeah, see you guys next time.